What is up gamers, Fcast and Chill here. So today I'm going to be back with some more Chambers of Zarek content. After I released my last video on Chambers of Zarek where I did 200 kill count and showed you the loot of from it, I started learning the challenge mode Chambers of Zarek, and I'm going to show you the loot from 100 kill count of that today. So challenge mode Chambers of Zarek is a bit different. So in normal Chambers of Zarek, you'll do five or six different rooms followed by an Ulm boss at the end. In the challenge mode, you have to do all 12 possible different rooms and then finish it off with an Ulm that hits much harder than the uh, regular. And really every room is a lot more difficult in the challenge mode. And you know, I've been doing a lot of them and practicing and I've gotten to the point where I can very consistently do it solo and it's been pretty nice, gotten some good loot. So I'm going to jump right into it and show you guys, you know, a kill count and then the loot from it. So we're starting off here with Tecton. So Tecton, I always want to start off with slamming him twice with my hammer, as you can see here. And, you know, luckily I did hit both hammers this time. If I miss both my hammers, then I'll often just reset. It's actually really nice that Jagex just added a bank chest in the lobby room recently. And so it's a lot faster to reset if you miss both of your hammers. But, you know, anyway, we hit both times, so I'm not going to worry too much about it. So during this fight, I'll just run around to dodge these little missile things that come at me. And then when he's walking back toward me, I will move out of the way as he attacks. And then I just walk around him and attack him every five ticks with my fang as I walk around. But um, yeah, just pretty much repeat this and use my fang specs whenever I get my energy back until he's dead. And as you can see, that is Tecton dead, and we pick up all these supplies and move on to the next room. So we have crabs next, and for this, the way this works is it's a puzzle room, and you have to direct this ball of energy to the right spots using these crabs. So. Uh, the, when you attack the crabs with range, they turn green, and then that will cancel out the purplish pink crystal. When you attack them with melee, they turn red, and that'll be used to cancel out the blue crystal. And when you attack them with magic, it will turn the ball blue, and that's used for the yellow crystal. So I'm just lining the crabs up here and got my staff um, that I'm going to put on. Or oop, I messed up there and accidentally um, still have my melee gear. But there we go. You can see I got that crab going. And then... You know, we essentially just direct the energy balls here to all the crystals. And there's the crab room done, so we're going to move on. Next, I um, do the ice demon, so I just move around and chop this wood for a bit. If you actually, you know, move around, um, you can walk in between your wood chops, and it won't slow down your next chop. So you can see I'm doing that here. And now i got an inventory full of wood. You actually need 48 wood total to get the ice demon to come out. So that was 27. Then we got to get another 21. And there's all our wood. So then after that, I just get all my gear out here, including my overload. I'm um, just going to grab all of that. I, I actually melee the ice demon, which is a little different than what a lot of people do. And then while I'm waiting for the ice demon to come out, I'll come back here and kill the scavenger beast and try to get all my supplies. So now we're ready for the ice demon. So I just run up to him and dragon warhammer spec him twice. And luckily I did hit my specs again. And then I do something here that I like to call the fang walk, where I just run around in this figure eight shaped pattern with my fang and just keep attacking him. And he is, you know, unable to hit me and I don't have to use any run energy. Pretty nice. And there is ice demon down. We're going to keep moving on. So next we're going into the shaman room. So this room is lizard man shamans and I try to get these guys stuck because that makes it a lot easier. So what I do is try to hope that they jump and then I use the holes of the floor to keep them on one side and put myself on the other. So you can see here I got this guy stuck here and then I can just kind of hang out. Don't really have to worry about anything. I'm just going to flick rigor and he will die sooner or later. And got the other guy stuck on the other side. I'm just going to finish him off and we're going to keep moving. I'm going to do a quick little prep here. Uh, I'm just going to build a storage unit and put some stuff in it. I usually make one inventory of the bruise and restores here. So you can see I didn't quite have 15 in darkened juice, so I'm only making 12. But yeah, this should be enough to get me through the raid. Um, should be plenty of supplies. We're going to go ahead and move on to the second floor, which is Vanguard's. So the Vanguard room is my least favorite. It's a little annoying, and I have gotten better at it recently since I've done this recording. But um, essentially, you just have to use melee to kill the ranged vanguard, magic to kill the melee vanguard, and range to kill the mage vanguard. 
if you want to see more tips for you know all these rooms and actually have me walk you through it in more detail i could put out a challenge mode solo guide at some point but um i'll hold off on that for now but anyway that's the vanguard room done after quite a while and then next we move on to the thieving room so the thieving room is pretty chill um essentially you just run around with a lock pick if you have one and click on these chests one of the highlighted chests will have some bats in it and those give you a little bit of extra points so i usually like to go for that and you can see i just got the bats right there and then you just go around and collect grubs you will need a total of 30 of them and also i don't think i mentioned it but for these challenge mode raids all of the rooms are actually always in the same order and since you have to do all the rooms there's no scouting or anything like that you never have to worry about that so that's another really nice thing about these challenge mode raids uh, compared to doing normal solos without scouting i'm actually getting more points per hour so that means a higher chance of getting purple items including a tebow um, for, for reference, if you do a deathless challenge mode raid, it's about a 1 in 500 chance of getting a Tebow. And so if I don't get one in my first 100 here that I'm doing for this video, I'm going to continue on and, you know, just keep grinding out challenge mode raids until I either get a Tebow or maybe get to like 2000 or something crazy. But anyway, that's the thieving room done. We're going to move on. Next we have Vespula, which is one of my least favorite rooms. I never really bothered learning the prayer enhance method here. Um, I just kind of chug restores and run back and forth with my Bofa. This is one room where I really wish I had a twisted bow since it would definitely shred this portal a lot faster. But essentially I just use redemption, run back and forth until the portal dies. And sometimes that can take a while depending on my luck. And there's Vespula down, so we're going to keep moving on. Just run through here to the tightrope room. And so this room, uh, there is a way to do a tightrope uh, skip where you just run across the tightrope without killing these guys. I have not bothered learning how to do that yet. I probably will before too long, but um, yeah, I'm, I'm not trying to go for like the Grandmaster combat achievement time yet. I probably want to wait till I get a TiVo first. I will say though that I actually did get the sub 45 minute recently for the master combat achievement time, which was pretty cool given my poverty gear. But yeah, just kind of hanging out here, killing these majors, and then after they're dead, gonna put on my protect from range and kill the rangers. And that's about it. Those rangers can hit really hard, so they kind of make you chug a lot of brews. But anyway, I'm just crossing here to grab this keystone, and then we can continue on. And that is the end of the second floor, so I'm gonna gear up, and we're gonna go down here to the bottom floor. Now we start off with the guardians here. So this guardian room, um, not too bad at all. Essentially, you just use your pickaxe because I'm um, on crush and then just smash these guys and run back and forth. Uh, the pathing that I'm doing here saves a lot of run energy. You just step back two tiles right after attacking and then walk forward one afterwards. Um, but yeah, we just hang out here until these guys die. It doesn't really take too long. And a little bit later, you can see both of the Guardians are dead. So we're moving on to Vasa. Uh, Vasa is a little bit of a tricky fight. After he teleports you, he'll do damage to you based off of what your HP was prior. And so you need to brew up after the teleport. And, you know, here I like to use the Mage Thrall because it does a little bit of extra damage. But this fight is pretty challenging on challenge mode. And, you know, I, I use my Fang on the crystals to kill them more quickly so that he can regen less HP. But um, it is a little RNG heavy sometimes, and occasionally this fight can go on a while if my fang's not hitting too hard. You can see there, it actually killed the crystal pretty quickly, so that was nice. But yeah, we just run around and range him until he goes and heals up, and then just pull out my fang. Uh, and that is Vasa done quite a bit later. And then I just pick up these supplies and continue on. And now we have two rooms left. This is the Mystics, so I'm just gonna run in here and kill these guys. I actually use my imbued salve ammy because they're undead and it is worth bringing that for uh, solo challenge mode raids. Probably not worth it for the regular uh, chambers of Zarek, but for challenge mode you probably want the salve ammy. And it shreds these guys pretty well. You can see you can hit really high numbers. I think my max hit somewhere in the ballpark of like 56 or 7 with the Bofa set up here. But yeah, pretty nice. And that's the Mystic's Dead, and now this is the fun part, a uh, Brew Chugging Simulator, or the Mudadiles. And so I just run in here, praying Augury in range to try to tank some damage, and then just go and chop this tree, and I just brew up as I get hit. So you can see I got hit pretty hard there. 
and I'm changing to protect from melee because he ran up up within range. And we're just gonna sit bruise and attack him here in between the tree chops. So you actually, at, right after you see the woodcutting XP drop, you can drink a brew or attack the baby mudadile, and it won't slow down your uh, slow down your next chop as long as you click back on the tree qu uh, quickly enough. So that's what I'm doing here, and um, it's going all right. I'm not having to use too many brews so far, and you can see that tree's getting chopped down pretty quickly. Um, I have the, my 99 wood cutting to thank for that for sure. And then after that, then I just change to my ranging gear, summon a thrall, and shoot these guys down. Big Muda Dial's a bit scary, but again, you just kind of shoot him down. Sometimes I do some tick eating here to make sure I don't die. Just kind of hover my mouse over my bruise and just shoot him down. But that was not too bad at all, still had plenty of bruise left. Now we're going to gear up for Ulm. So Ulm on challenge mode is a lot scarier than regular Ulm. I think off prayer you can get hit for upwards of 40 in the later phases, which can just stack you out very quickly if you mess up. But I've gotten pretty good at it from having to do these challenge modes. It's actually amazing how much better I am at Ulm compared to when I was just doing the regular solo Ulms beforehand. And again, you know, if you want me to create a guide for challenge mode Ulm, I potentially could at some point. I did create a guide for um, normal Ulm solo, and I feel like that got a decent amount of attention. So, you know, if people do want to see a more advanced guide for the challenge mode raids, I could release one. Just let me know in the comments. But yeah, really just running back and forth here, and it's really the same fight. It's just you need to be a lot more careful and try to avoid taking damage as much as possible. But um, yeah, I'm just going to hang out, running back and forth. After that hand is no longer crippled, I'm going to use another Dragon Warhammer spec on it, since I usually like to hit two Warhammer specs on each hand if I can. But um, yeah, you can see when I get a successful attack here, that's when I change all my gear and then smack this hand as he turns his head. Unfortunately, I missed there, but that's all right. We're just going to keep running back and forth so that I don't take any damage and just resummon my Thrall whenever I can. But yeah, um, it, anyway, you know, not too bad of a fight. We're just going to fast forward this. And as we get through the third phase here, then we get to the head phase. And again, this is pretty scary. It can be a bit of a brew chugging simulator. But, um, you know, as long as you keep moving and uh, try to avoid his attacks, then you will be fine. But he can hit you really hard. So yeah, we're going to finish this kill count off. And you can see that is the end of Ulm. I still had, what, like three and a half brews left, so not too bad at all. And I actually got a new PB on this kill count of 4727. Like I said, since then I've gotten a sub 45, but yeah, got some Irrit Leafs and Dynamite uh, worth about 962k. Um, I guess that's kind of useless since I'm an Iron Man, but I mean... I'll take it, I guess. But anyway, let's go ahead and get into the drops and see what I got from these 100 kills. So we're going to start off with kill one here. And these first few, as well as uh, some of them later, I do die, so the loot isn't as good as it could have been. Um, you can see here, actually, on kill number six that I get the Immortal Raid Team, which is the combat achievement for doing it deathless. And, um, you know, I get a lot better very quickly, and I'm able to do it without dying a lot after you know about 10 kill count or so but um you can see here i got a din's bulwark at 12 completed challenge modes so that's kind of cool that's a new purple for me um that'll be useful for like flicking on when i'm doing arma you just equip the dins for the defense bonus but yeah let's just keep going um yeah just gonna be doing a lot of these raids and you can see my time for each of these is in the ballpark of 50 minutes early on uh, as I get better, it drops from, you know, low to mid 50s to the high 40s, and that's about what I'm averaging now. But um, yeah, getting a lot of supplies, lots of herbs and planks, um, you know, lots of like dragon arrows and stuff for eventually when I get a Tebow, which will be nice. But yeah, uh, just kind of slogging through all these, going kind of dry for a second purple. On average, you're expected to get a purple every 14 kill count. I think it's 14.1 if they're all deathless. And um, yeah, that's not really happening too far uh, so far, but you know, it's all good. I'm still getting a lot of kill count and, you know, getting better at it and getting a lot of supplies. And there's the 50 threshold and still just the one purple, the din so far. 
it's a little wild. Um, and here we go at 55, I got a deck scroll. So, um, you know, that's, I already have one of those or a couple, but still a good 37, 38 mil to sell for some bonds. Not going to complain too much about that. Let's just keep going. And now we've crossed 75 and still no other purples. It's a little wild to be only at two purples at 75 challenge modes, but that's okay. And here we go at 78, I got an arcane prayer scroll. And 79, another arcane prayer scroll. Of course, when I get back to back purples, it would happen to be two arcanes, that's okay. Oh, and then here at 81, I got ancestral legs. Okay, so this is actually really good. Um, you can see this, these are worth 140 mil at the time, and these are actually a huge upgrade. I've been rocking the Mystic Bottoms, as you can see in my inventory, so I'm pretty excited to get these. Um, yeah, definitely going to make the raid easier as a whole. I, I really wanted some Mage Gear upgrades. I would really like the Ancestral Top too. I think other than those two items, um, or other than a T-Bow, those are two of the items I want the most. Dragon Claws would be super nice too, but... Yeah, I'm really happy to get these. Hopefully I can get some more good purples. And I got another twisted kit here. So this is at um, 83 and these are actually for coloring the ancestral. So we'll try that out in a bit after I get through all these kill count. And just more supplies. I'm getting quite a bit of dark relics here. If you see this like dark ball shape thing and that's actually something you can use on a skill to get some XP, and I've been using those on Herblore, and each one is a little over 14k Herblore XP, so that does add up. It's pretty nice. And we're coming up on 100 here. Here's 95. Just more herbs and ore and planks and all that good stuff. And there is the 100 kill count. Um, that's it, really. I got So I got five purples, two arcanes, a dex, and then dins and ancestral eggs. And as a sneak peek, here's my 101 kill count, because I don't want to end on 100. And I did get another dex scroll here, so that was more bond money, which is nice. But um, yeah, that's it for my 100 kills. I have myself here, you can see I am wearing my um, new ancestral gear, putting that on and trying out the twisted kit. So that's pretty cool. You can see that looks really nice. Um, got some fashion scape going on. There's my mage gear. But um, yeah, not too bad. Got something good at least. And overall, here are the drops from both my 203 normal solos that I'd done, as well as these 100 challenge modes. So you can see the total here is worth 474 mil GP at the time. You can see all those purples I have at the top. Uh, seven scrolls and three other items lots of supplies and then just from the challenge mode raids here are the supplies that i got so you can see i got 53 mil in supplies in addition to those five purples that i showed you the dins ancestral legs two arcanes and one deck scroll so that's that's it for the 100 challenge mode um kill count so i guess going forward with cox you know i'm going to be camping challenge mode raids a lot more i really want a tebow and I'm going to stay here as long as it takes. You know, I'm, I'm going to do some other stuff too. I'm not just going to do these 24-7. But um, if you'd like to see another video, you know, once I get to like another milestone, like 250 kill count or 300 or something, let me know. Um, also, if you do want to see a guide for, you know, the entirety of a challenge mode raid, how to do all the rooms and how to do Ulm, let me know and I can try to put something like that together too. I think that might help some people. But that said, I wouldn't try learning challenge mode raids until you've really mastered the regular Chambers of Zarek because it is significantly harder and more punishing if you make mistakes. But um, yeah, I guess that's it for this video. If you've enjoyed it, please like and subscribe, and I will be back soon with some more content. Thanks!